What's going on everyone? This is Impulse and welcome back to Hermitcraft Season 6. Last episode guys, we got the tree farm working and it is spectacular. And today I wanted to start things off by heading on over to the gold shop because I did a little more AF cane and I have some gold to restock this place or continue stocking it because I think last time, yeah, we didn't quite get it all the way stocked up. But, uh, oh, <laughs> okay, we came just in time. Wow, we sold a whole 54 diamonds. Oh man, this place is rocking. Awesome. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's fill that chest back up. Uh, whoever bought that, thank you. Appreciate the business. I have no idea who it would have been, but yeah, let's just hold down left click, drag across, and see if I can get this right this time. I always seem to like go one square too far and mess it up, but let's see. And I think we can even cheat it here by going like that. Yeah, there we go. Nice. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's finish this bottom one off like this, and then we'll see. Maybe we can get... Oh, see? That's what I mean. I, that's what I mean. I go too far, and then I have to redo the whole thing. Oh, okay. Take your time. Get it right. Here we go. And one more. Okay. Uh, did I have more? I do. Oh my gosh. I brought so much gold, guys. We are so rich. Uh, anyway, while I'm doing this, today what we're going to do is we're going to open up a new monument. Or I guess build a new monument, I should say. It's not like a shop or anything. But we're going to build a monument because one of the rewards that my patrons get on Patreon is that I will do a monument. And I'll put their name and, and uh, I think we're going to do like the skin, like their head on a like armor stand or something and yeah and that way they kind of get recognized for being awesome and supporting me the way they do so today we're gonna build that up <laughs> oh my gosh I brought so much gold and uh, yeah and then we'll be able to recognize my amazing patrons so that's gonna be fun um, but let's see oh, I wanted to check the carrots do you think we sold any of these Oh, sweet, we did. Oh my gosh, are we gonna get a full stack? We did a full stack of diamonds, people. We are raking it in. I even have leftover gold here because uh, it looks like I'm gonna have to make more golden carrots, but that left side now is completely stocked up and I need to get on crafting some more golden carrots. But first, let's go scout some locations to where we might be able to build this monument today. Before we head over, I know there's some supplies I'm going to need, and redstone is one of them, because we're going to make a ton of pistons today, and I'm kind of hoping that I didn't miss my chance, because uh, 64 ore per diamond is not a bad deal. Okay, good. We're good. 64 per one diamond. That's good. For those of you wondering, this is what I have left to my name here. I have 61 blocks and four, and uh, we're going to spend some of those right now. I know you guys are always kind of curious about... I, I see a lot of comments about who's the richest hermit and all that kind of stuff. Now, I'll tell you what. I'm probably not because I like to spend my, my diamonds about as fast as I can get them. Uh, so let's see. 64 ore per diamond. So we'll go one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that'll probably be enough. So that's nine and ten. Hey, buddy, what are you up to? Buddy? Tango? Hello? Knock, knock. What? <laughs> <laughs> what is Tango doing? I was just coming through the nether and Tango's in here blocked up in dirt for some reason. I think we can still get him, can't we? No. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I think he's safe. We'll just let him be. All right, so I'm thinking about heading to the tree farm and putting up a portal and seeing what's on the other side because it's pretty far away from where most of the hermits are and I kind of want to be off the beaten path. So basically be where there's not going to be a lot of hermits around the area. Jeez, okay. Okay, Wither's still here. I hear you, buddy. I hear you. Let's just turn that down. <laughs> um, yeah, we want to be away from where the other hermits are because we're going to be using armor stands. And armor stands in Minecraft are considered considered entities. Oh, we... Oh, shoot. I didn't see that bedrock there. We got to go down one more. Um, and so we want to make sure that we don't have too many entities where a lot of hermits will be because that causes lag. Uh, actually, let's move the portal. Uh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Bedrock corners. That's a fancy portal. <laughs> um, yeah, so we don't want a lot of, to, load, uh, uh, to load a lot of entities around where hermits are because that causes lag on the server. And so I want to be as far away from 
like the civilization as possible. So I figured that uh, this is far enough away. In fact, you know what? A lot of you guys have been asking me for the location. Mind you, uh, hopefully you guys realize that the whole uh, nether ceiling generation, I think it's per seed now, so it, this spot won't work for every world. But if you're using the Hermitcraft seed for your world, uh, this spot is here. I'll go inside. Why not? Uh, we'll go inside and I'll show you that exact center block right there. If it'll show me, uh, you can see I'm looking at 169, 124, 136 are the coordinates. So there you go. I know a few people have been asking for that. So uh, happy to give that to you. No problem. But like I said, if you're not on the Hermitcraft seed, I'm not sure that that 3x3 three three that I used will exist for you in your world. But all right, let's head through this portal and let's see what we got. Hopefully there's a nice area for us to build this monument out. We're going to find out. We are in a jungle. Okay. That might work. <laughs> on the top of a tree now. I think I'll cut down that portal and lower it. Um, but, yeah. Jungle's cool. Uh, you know, there's other stuff in jungles I might need, like parrots and cocoa beans and vines and stuff. So, yeah, this could be cool. Uh, I think I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to take this portal down and I'm going to find a more habitable, inhabitable, inhabitable, habitable. <laughs> a better spot to build this monument. We'll be right back. Okay, there we go. I think this area will work. I did a little terraforming, flattened it out, and I think this is where we're going to build the monument. This will be good. It's kind of nice being out here in the middle of nowhere, like just knowing that I'm probably the first hermit to set eyes on this landscape. And the idea of the jungle being right here, I really like too, because I got a feeling I'm going to be using that quite a bit. But anyway, I need to start gathering all the materials it's going to take. I'm going to take a different approach with this building. I'm going to actually design it from the inside out. So I'm actually going to start with the floor of it and then kind of do the walls and then the exterior. And we probably won't get it all done today because it's going to be a pretty big build. But uh, yeah, let me go gather a bunch of materials and then we will get started on the floor. All right, so I think we got everything we need to get going on the floor, so there's only one thing left to do. Let's go ahead and get started. The floor is now in and it's looking pretty good. You can see what this is, it's a combination of the patron logo, at least the old one, which I actually liked better, and my eye logo, of course. So it's like the eye with the dot being the patron symbol. 
and I think it looks pretty good. For those of you that may have been around for quite a few seasons, this may look familiar to you because it is the same exact floor I used in Season 3. I liked it so much, I just wanted to bring it back. Uh, with this texture pack, though, it looks a little different than, uh, differently than it did back then, uh, but I think it's going to look even better when we put down this glass and we're going to kind of wash out the colors just a little bit, uh, so that may help. But I'm going to put down a bunch of glass. Uh, what does the piggy think of this? You like it, guy? You like it? He was watching me build the whole thing. He was like... Uh, no, oh, he shook his head no. Really? <laughs> I like it. I don't know about him. Whatever. <laughs> all right, guys. I'm going to put down some glass, and then we'll see how it looks. And there we go. The glass is all in. I even added a black border of concrete around it just to make the logo stand out even more, and I think that definitely helped. So the way this is going to work is basically going to align the edges of the inside of this room that we're going to create with all the armor stands with the heads of my patrons on them and I'm thinking about utilizing that new armor stand book that we can like generate poses and cool stuff with um, so I'm gonna need to go find that book I think it was like underwater somewhere in some secret thing um, so I'm gonna have to go searching for it but while I'm searching I want to run a clip of something that happened a little earlier I was headed to the shopping district and I ran into somebody I really didn't expect to run into oh uh, uh, hey uh oh hello hi evil hi, Zuma. what are you I didn't expect to see you here I'm here to kill you in oh box. okay <laughs> I was I was wondering if I should be afraid or not <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm not evil anymore. I'm very well behaved. Are you now? Okay, I'll trust you then. <laughs> yes, and I would like to become a patron of iTrade. The iron iTrade is the iron impulse. Is that not right? That's right. That's my trademark. Anything I whatever. That's me. <laughs> All right, then. You're the person to talk to. So, yeah. Asuma told me that you owe him a pass to this place. That's true, yeah. Two, at least two weeks ago, I gave him a little punishment for, you know, being outlandish on the server, and he served his sentence. So I do owe him a book, uh, just waiting for him to come and collect. Oh, All right. And how much does the book cost? It's 32 diamonds is the price these days. Well, here's the thing. I have no diamonds right now, but I'll guarantee to you that Asuma will come and pay for those diamonds. Hmm. If you just hand me the pass, yeah? Well, you definitely look like a trustworthy individual, so... Exactly, I'm very trustable. <laughs> I guess I, <laughs> I can trust you, and we'll see if Azuma comes through. Make sure he pays up, but uh, yeah, you make sure he gets that book, too. I'm going to trust you, Evil Azuma. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you have faith in Evil X, so I'm going to now do some trading, I guess. All right, enjoy, man. I'm not so sure that was the best idea. <laughs> doing a deal with evil Azuma. I think I probably got took on that one. But uh, yeah, anyway, oh, this place is cool. I need to do this. It looks like uh, you get your own statue with all your links to things. I definitely should do that soon. Uh, but anyway, I think what we're looking for is over here, if I remember right. So we'll just go for a little swim here. And I think at some point we might see some lights. Hopefully, I hope I'm in the right place. Uh, we'll find out. Um, I think it was like a big underwater statue somewhere, right? Maybe we need to speed things up. I think we can use rockets underwater, can't we? Yeah, we can. Oh, yeah, that's much faster. Where is this thing? It's a giant underwater statue. I don't know how I could potentially miss it. Okay, well, I'm going to fly around above water, I guess, and look for it. Oh, there it is, there it is. I think I had just gone past it and didn't look down soon enough. But this is it. You can see a big armor stand under the water. So here we go. Okay, now let's see. I think all we need to do in here is press this button. And it looks like, yep, we were dispensed a book. And now what we can do with this book is target the stands. And then we can pick... All these options, that's cool. Sh what we want to show, if we want gravity, if we want it to even be visible, display the name, all that good stuff. 
Oh, nudging it even. Oh, this is really cool. Oh, this is what I'm most interested in. There's all these different preset poses that we could choose from. And I think I'm going to kind of randomize it amongst my patrons. So that's going to be fun. Okay, so we have the book now. Now we just need to start getting some statues going. Oop, let me see if I get out of here. All right, I'm going to head back. I'm going to grab a few armor stands and then we'll play with this just a bit. All right, so I'm back here at the monument. I grabbed a couple stands and I just want to see how these work. I'm just going to place them down wherever right now. But eventually what we're going to have is on the edge of the room, little spots for each armor stand. And I think I want to do something fun with them as well. But let's just get a, a good idea of how this book works. So I feel like we probably need to be close to the armor stand that we want to target. Let's see. Do we click on it? Do we click away from it? Let's see. Okay. Check target. So let's do that. Um, okay. So... Because it's outlined, I think that means, well, it was outlined. I walked away. Uh, I think that means we were probably good, right? So let's do that again. Check target. Look at it. Okay, we're good. Get back. Okay, don't punch it. Get back into the book. I guess we're okay. I don't know. <laughs> okay, it looks good. It's outlined. Okay, we're going to go to the next page. And then show base play. Yeah, that's fine. We want actual arms. Excellent. So that put arms on it. And then small stand, no. Apply gravity, yes. I think it's gravity by default, so I don't need to do anything. Display name, yes. Let's do that. Okay, so I don't know how to change the name, but we'll definitely change it to the patron names as well. Uh, hopefully that's somewhere in the book that we can set that. Or maybe I need to do it on an anvil first. I'll have to figure that out. Uh, let's do one where he's face palming. That should be good. Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay, that's cool. All right, uh, next. Let's see, what else can we do? Okay, so you can nudge stuff. You can lock it to... Okay, definitely we will want to lock them when we're done. Seal armor stands are invulnerable. Interesting. Oh, creative mode. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I think we need to name them first in the anvil, and then the names will show up. Okay, so lesson learned there. That's good. All right, now let's see if we can take this armor stand, and what I want to do is we'll pretend this is a patron head. Now, the patron heads I'm going to have to generate through use of commands to, to get them. The other hermit said that's all good. I can do that. Um, but for now, I just want to use a mob head here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I got to do one more. I got to do one more. So let's see. How hard is it if we have a stand that is that close for us to still get it? Is it good? Check target. Oh, it's still targeting that one over there. How do I make sure that I'm targeting... Okay, there we go. So I just need to stand a little bit further away, and then we can target the right stand. Okay, that's not too hard. And in this one, we will do... I'm just going to do a different pose. So uh, let's do... Winning? What's winning do? Oh, uh, it's got to have the arms, guys. Got to have the arms. Show arms, yes. There we go. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's put this head on it. And there we go. Very nice. Very nice. This is going to be so much fun doing this for uh, all my patrons. So anyway, okay, I got to figure out how the book works. This is going to be great, like I said. Um, but there's one other thing I wanted to look into today before we go. And I mentioned it. We had a little bit of an issue with the tree farm still. And that was that we were collecting wood on top of the fence post. And I've been thinking about it. And I might have come up with a solution for it. All right. So here's the problem we're having with this. Every once in a while, we'll get wood landing on the fence post itself. And then they'll start kind of bunching up and we I think we lose a lot of wood when this happens so I had the idea that maybe instead of blowing up the blocks right when they come out to here that maybe we push them all the way across and then it should hopefully push the floating logs there off the fence post and down and then we just need to detect when the wood is actually reached like this block right here this level and then we can send the signal up so I don't know what we have above us but uh, we need to take a look here and see if we have any room to kind of navigate a redstone signal up to the deal that's kind of like crushing the withers head and let's see here that's up a little further uh, he's right inside that block. Uh, I don't know that we can go through here. Let me go over a little bit. Did I bring? I didn't bring any blocks with me, really. Um, how do we get up to him, actually? It's kind of a tight squeeze in here. But yeah, I need to find the best way to deliver the signal up to those, you know, that piston thing that I showed you last episode, where we're kind of swapping a block around to get him up there. Oh, I think it's way over here, right? Yeah, we can take a look from here. So... Let me go up here and just take a peek and see what we can do. Oop, back one more. <laughs> like I said, really tight squeeze. I don't know what was here. 
really tight squeeze up in here. Uh, all right, so this is the signal that we're using today. Basically, if I break that, uh, we're stealing the signal off of the pushers. So as soon as it pushes the blocks out, that's when we send signal up to these repeaters. And what I'd wanna do is change that. So it looks like we can send it up, oh, like a torch tower through here maybe? Right through that block. Okay, all right, so that's what we have to work with. Let me grab some different redstone components and I'll see what we can figure out here. All right, redstone magic is in place and let me show you what I have going on here. I'm using the new leaf technology, it's cool stuff. Uh, basically, let's see, I don't know if it even shows it. Uh, you'll see, oh, there it is on the very right there. You see targeted block, Minecraft, oak leaves, and then there's a distance of seven. And basically what we can do is that distance of seven, it's detecting kind of how far away wood is to it. Ooh, and that reminds me. So, okay, so when I place that there, you can see the distance is now one. And so because of that distance change, we're able to detect that with an observer block. Now, what I was just thinking that I didn't really test was what happens if I put a block here. So now it's back to seven. If I put it here, does that still change? No. So it's only when a block goes in front of the leaf that it's going to detect. And that's what we want because we don't want the wither to explode the logs until they get all the way to this side. So what I've done with this signal basically is I've gone from the observer into a solid block there. I have a dropper there and then basically just some observers here. Let's go on up. Some observers facing uh, out of that dropper. They're detecting the dropper getting powered from this block through that observer. And then that goes up to the redstone signal here. Now it does set off twice uh, because it's going to set off once when the wood comes in and then once when the wood breaks. Uh, but that's okay. I've tested that and, and you'll see the wither actually take down damage twice so he'll take damage right there he blows up and then it gets another update and he takes damage again but they are that signal happens so far apart that it's not going to hurt anything it's not going to mess up the pistons uh, that are moving the block around uh, so that'll be fine and uh, yeah I'll definitely have to put the glass back in so we don't have that kind of thing going on so let me fill this glass back in is there any more glass I need to worry about uh, we'll see okay so I'm gonna go down here let's run it just for a few goes and then we'll see if we are indeed then getting the blocks across the middle so let's see we would need to run it it should be the third tree that grows that would be the breakage so maybe we can run up there and catch it in action oh did we step off too soon no okay so now let's see if we can catch it in action and there oh oh <laughs> So I put the detector on this side. That's the only going to detect the top piece of wood. We need to actually put it like, oh, if I put it like here. Okay, so this is this is what might be nice about this. If we go like this, because this is just leaves. So if we go like that, take that one out, we can actually come across the middle here and fix this super simple. I'm not sure how far the leaf technology signal will travel, but let's do that. Yep, there we go. Okay, there he exploded. So there and he exploded so many more blocks. You now you see those blocks sitting there. Um, that's fine though, because they'll get pushed away as soon as the next tree comes in. Uh, they should get pushed onto the hoppers. So let's do a few more. Let's do three more and see if we can see it in action. Uh, maybe this time I won't derp up and put the leaves in a bad spot. Now that's all in place. We should be good to go. So there's tree number one, tree number two, and then let's try to catch tree number three grow up okay run <laughs> run we want to see it i guess i could have put my spectator account on but we should see all that wood blow up right now okay geez <laughs> it took a little bit longer than i thought it was gonna take but yeah good to go there oh i should definitely fill in that right there so we're gonna get much more wood out of this thing now i think oh he's gonna blow up again because i did that um ooh. and then you see that block right there that's the one that was was the problem before now i bet we're gonna do it one more time sorry <laughs> we're gonna do three more trees and then we're gonna see if that birch oak or, or that birch oak that birch log is gone and my guess is it will be because as soon as we do the second tree that should push it off of the fence post so it'd be this tree right here is that going to grow up? There we go. We can watch it. There it goes. Gets pushed off and into the hoppers. So we are collecting all the wood now. I think we have fixed the problem and a pretty elegant solution. Plus, I mean, that leaf technology stuff is just too cool to not use somewhere. So we had to. I had to throw it in even though it wasn't necessary. I guess I could have just done a regular observer. But that's not, that's not as fun, right? 
<laughs> so, all right, cool. I'm glad we fixed that. Now I definitely feel like uh, we will be getting all the wood out of this thing, and I won't be losing any when we AFK. Look at all this wood we've gained so far already. This is amazing. So anyway, I think that's going to do it for me today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll back up a little bit. Extreme close-up. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe before you go. And with that said, I'll see you guys again next time. Have a good one, everyone.